In this video, I want to break down how I managed to travel the world with my girlfriend. I'll share our monthly budget, how much we actually spend, but most importantly, I'll explain how exactly I managed to pay for all these adventures while basically having no real job anymore. I'll be sharing our investments, our passive and not so... <sighs> and not so passive income streams, including YouTube and how much they pay me to make videos. But before I get to that, why did we decide to go traveling? Well, it all started back home in 2019, when we said, let's travel the world for a full year in 2022. That's it. That's the flashback. We just wanted to travel the world, go on adventures and experience true freedom before we settle down and start a family. Just travel while we're young and flexible. We picked the destinations we wanted to visit. Thailand, Bali, Japan, Sydney, Hawaii, Los Angeles, New York. We did have to change our plans a couple of times during the trip, but more on that later. Now that we knew where we wanted to go, we had to come up with a budget. So let me show you our monthly budget. So this is what we came up with. On average per month, we wanted to spend 5,000 euros, which today is equal to $5,000. Yay, Euro. How did we come up with this amount? Just a rough estimate on how much we needed to cover all our costs. It may sound like a lot, but this is a budget both for my girlfriend and myself. So for two persons. Plus, it covers absolutely everything. Flights, accommodation, trips, food, drinks, fun, but also our costs back home, including our mortgage, our health insurance, taxes, property taxes, municip munip municipality, municipality tax. You get the point. We had a lot of costs back home that we also needed to pay for. So did we actually manage to keep our costs at 5,000 euros a month? Let's take a look at our costs. So after almost nine months of traveling, I can break down the average cost per month in the following categories. Flights, in total we spent 4,487 euros, which is roughly 500 euro per month. Considering that's for two persons and that we've been on 13 flights so far, that's not that bad. Next up, accommodation. We've spent a total of 12,297 euros, meaning 1,366 euros per month. Looking at all the places we've stayed, from a luxurious condo in Bangkok to a three-bedroom villa with a pool in Bali, it looks pretty damn awesome, man. Eh? To a small studio in Sydney, and this could have been a bit lower if it wasn't for Hawaii and Los Angeles. Real expensive. And the next category is costs back home, and roughly it adds up to 1,550 euros per month. And the next category is fun. Zero. We do not have the fun and the travels. No, I'm just too lazy to categorize all the hundreds of transactions we've had. Plus, it's impossible. We've paid a lot of stuff in cash, so there's no way to find out what we've actually spent it on. So let's just group it together as other. But mostly it will consist of food, drinks, trips, excursions, scooter rentals, car rentals. So the way I find out how much we've spent per month is by exporting all of my bank transactions from both my personal bank account and my business bank account into .cvs files, inputting them into Excel to filter out any folded data, and boom, 9,669 euros per month? What? That's way too much. Wait, let me call someone who can help me figure this out. Hi, Stefan. Yo, Elon, what's up? Yo, I know you're busy with getting us to Mars and shit, but I really need your help. I just calculated our monthly cost while traveling, but it just seems too high. Did I forget something in our calculation? Um, you've taken into account the wooden work products. <laughs> I totally forgot. Thanks so much, Elon. You're very welcome, Stefan. I really love your YouTube channel, by the way. Yeah, okay, okay. Bye, bye, Elon. Thank you. So, adding up everything and now taking into account the quantum wave paradox, it still makes around 8,000 euros per month? around 3,000 euros above our budget. Here's the thing. The first half of the year, we lived in Thailand, Bali, Malaysia, mostly cheap countries. I mean, this meal in Bangkok, $2. The best ramen noodles I've had in my entire life in a former Michelin star restaurant, five bucks. Oh, by the way, if you want to see all the delicious food we ate and all the hotspots we visited while traveling, then make sure to follow my girlfriend on TikTok. Anyways, after spending six months in mostly cheap countries, we now arrived in Sydney, Australia. 
no more eating out. You see this meal, 50 fucking bucks. Mate, we had to start living a bit more frugal. So we went back to cooking at home, which was actually, to be honest, really nice for a change. Plus, you get to eat a lot healthier this way. But we still overspent our budget. How come? Inflation. Nah, but seriously, I mapped out our spending per month and saw that we really overspent mostly in the US, and especially Hawaii, LA, and Las Vegas were so expensive. Plus, we had friends visiting while we were in LA, meaning we would go out for dinner, we would have fun, go on trips, excursions meaning we would spend over our budget and this also explains the spike you can see in May when other friends were visiting us in Bali plus on top of all that while my girlfriend and I were visiting the US uh, we visited the craziest place in the world and if you follow me on Instagram you probably know what I'm talking about and if not I'm talking about burning Man. probably the, the most crazy thing I've experienced for a whole week but super expensive and wasn't really planned as we didn't think we would get the tickets for Burning Man but we did anyways I guess for the remaining months we just have to be a little bit more mindful about our spending to compensate for the overspending we've did so far but okay how am I able to overspend in the first place where does the money come from so far we've discussed the budget and our costs but now it's time for the most juicy part of the video I'm talking about my income streams Yo, what are you doing here? I'm in the middle of a video. Yeah, I know, but I just wanted to show you something. What? Look at this wallet I just got. You interrupted my video to show me your wallet. Yeah, but it's not just any wallet. It's an extra wallet. The James Bond of wallets. Yeah, I know. I've got one myself. Ah, so you already know it can do this. Yeah, I know they have quick card access. Okay, but I bet you don't know you can never lose your wallet ever again. Yeah. I do man, I know about the tracker card in the wallet, that if I ever lose my wallet, I can just open up an app on my phone and see exactly where I left my wallet. I can even ring my wallet. And the best thing about it is, it's solar powered. Oh, I, I didn't know. You know what man, did you know it has built in RFID blocking protecting you from wireless theft? Oh. And did you know it's made of only environmentally friendly and high quality materials like recycled Italian leather and carbon fiber? And did you know that Extra Wallet wanted to sponsor this video and are giving up to a 25% discount if you use the code STEFAN at checkout or just click the link in the description. Trust me, it will be the last wallet you will ever buy. I've been using them for more than five years already. Anyways, where was I? How do I actually fill up that wallet? I'm gonna talk about my income streams that make all the traveling possible. The first income stream is rental income. I'm renting out my own house back in Amsterdam for around 1500 euros a month. And I know that's peanuts compared to LA, but that's the rental price in Amsterdam. And the next income stream is affiliate links. Meaning if you go in the description and decide to use the same gear as I do, I get a very small fee. And if I add up all the income I've earned from all my affiliate links this year, and then calculate the average per month, it comes down to $2.90, let's go. No, but in all seriousness, if you ever want to buy the same gear as I do, use the links in the description. That way you help me out and it costs you nothing extra. And up next is sponsorships and brand deals. And before I give you a number, I just want you to know that I haven't collaborated with a lot of brands this year. And it's not because brands... <laughs> and it's... <laughs> It's not because brands or companies don't want to work with me. In fact, I have probably around 50 not replied emails in my inbox. Nice. Because to be blunt, most of the proposals and offers I get are shitty products. Shitty, low quality companies that I don't want to promote to my audience. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I choose to work with brands that have products that I think will actually benefit myself and therefore my audience. That's the reason that I chose to work together with Extra Wallet. It has been a product that I've been using for five years already, long before they asked me to promote this video. So of course they, I said yes when they asked me. Click the link in the description to buy the last wallet you will buy. Anyways, with that being said, I've chosen to only work together with a handful of brands this year. Looking at the income I've received, it adds up to around $2,000, meaning around $222 per month. And now last, but definitely not least, how much does YouTube pay me 
to create videos. You see, this whole trip started as just a trip around the world, but it's grown to something much larger. I don't look at this as just having fun and going on adventures and traveling the world, even though we're doing that. I also see this year as the year that I go all in on content creation. And my goal for this year is to make it possible to sustain the same lifestyle that we're having right now, purely based of income, based on my brand, which my videos are part of. So let's see if I'm on the right track to reach that goal. How much does YouTube pay me per month since the start of this year? As you can see, when I filter down to this year, YouTube has paid me just over 10,000 euros. So that comes down to just over 1100 euros per month of YouTube AdSense. So when we put all monthly costs and monthly income next to each other, that leaves a gap of 5,000 euros per month. Where does the money come from to fill up this gap? Savings. Savings that I've been able to gather in the two years I've worked as a freelancer. Savings that I was supposed to put into a retirement fund, into other investments for the future. Savings that I chose to invest in myself and my business. Investments in my personal life so I get to experience the world to the fullest. And investments in my professional life so I can grow and create my own creative business. Was this a stupid and risky move or was this the best decision of my life? There's only one way to find out, by sticking around on my channel. See you in the next video. Cheers!